Hello, and welcome to No Such Thing as a Bad Movie Podcast. I'm April Itmansky, and I'm here today with... Colin Cunningham. And... Jim Maxwell. Special guest, Jim Maxwell. Yay. Yes, He's Jim. Back for welcome back. Time? Back for another great movie. This is your... This was... Oh, this is the third, yeah. Yeah. Did you recommend... Was it Tiptoes? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you recommended well, that. You... Th- you said I introduced you to it way back when we were working together. I think so, yeah. And, and I was like, I don't remember that, but I'll take it. Here's and another one we can blame on you. That's true. And we yeah. also talked about The Fanatic, which was uh, <laughs> yeah. a Patreon episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this movie, oh wait, for, before we get into the movie, did everyone have a good Christmas? Uh, it was yeah. pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah, sick was nice. most of the time. We all got sick, uh, yeah. if yeah. that's... Uh, you you made it out okay. I you? was <laughs> fine, yeah. It must have been the alcohol. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it protected you. Exactly. So, um, Jim, you wanted to do this movie called Millennium from yeah. 1989, yes. which is a movie I have never heard of. Mm-hmm. Um, what's uh, what's the story behind this movie? Uh, okay, it's pretty interesting. So, like, wh- whatever. I uh, I wanted to be a map painter when I was really young, mm-hmm. but not like digital map painting. Like way back in the day when they used to do map paintings on glass and that kind of mm. thing. And there's quite a few of them in this film. Um, and I was just checking around the yellow pages, I guess, whatever that <laughs> is, and uh, found, I don't know, some like motion picture company or something like that. And, you know, I contacted as many as I could and everyone was like, no, no, sorry, there's nothing here. Mm. And then this one guy said, yeah, come down and check out, like we're about to wrap, but come down and check out what we've done. And so I went down to this place and the guy was really, you know, younger, I guess he was in his 30s, probably at the time I was a kid. And, uh, and he showed me around the, the, the studio and everything was being torn down. And there was this model of an airplane. And I said, wow, th- this model is really cool. And, you know, they had some like cotton for clouds and stuff like that. And I mm. said, what's the movie called? And he's, he's like, it's Millennium. <laughs> and I sort of got the impression he didn't think, it, you know, he wasn't sure if it was going to be any good or not. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, you know, like when you're young and yeah. you're on like a, a back lot film set or whatever in studios is like super exciting regardless of what it is. Mm-hmm. So and this was in Toronto, right? This was in Toronto, yeah, downtown Toronto. And I came all the way from Brampton to go there. So like two hour bus ride. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so I said, yeah, you know, I really want to be a map painter and stuff like, and stuff like that. And, and he, he said, uh, yeah, there's nothing. It wasn't a, a case of like, there's nothing here, kid. You know, it wasn't <laughs> like, go look elsewhere kind of thing. It was more like, yeah, we don't really have, and uh, this movie's done. Like, it's just all really boring and lame. It was and already you thought, shot. You right? thought you yeah. were talking about like, that at that particular moment like yeah i mean i didn't know what what stage of the movie <laughs> movie was in at that point but mm-hmm. uh yeah they, they basically wrapped and i think the guy felt bad and he was like look i'll give you a ride back to the subway oh, oh no well, <laughs> but so did, um, he, did he give you a tour of the, the yeah i mean we kind of walked stuff? around and i saw some of the sets being torn down which really when you think about this film it's just kind of industrial noise yes yeah like just yeah. like the future world yeah it's just, just like one big warehouse basically yeah. and, like and, scaffolding yeah i think it was probably shot in a factory yeah you know, yes. like that's, most that's, of these low budget like. 80s films but uh yeah no i mean the model was cool and everything and then on the ride back he was like you know i i'd really rather work on a film like field of dreams <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, all right <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you on that. That's, that's great. But did, um, was that in production at the time, or it already came out? Uh, w- that, it was 1989 as well. So oh, okay. yeah, so it came it, out it earlier came out before yeah. the spectacle, yeah. which is Millennium. Um, <laughs> and and so that's what led me to see the movie in the first place to actually see behind the scenes of of a movie, and then mm-hmm. that hadn't come out yet. And then I saw that it was coming out, so I dragged all my friends to go see it, Uh-oh. and it was a total shit show. Like, <laughs> like the audience was laughing; no one was taking it seriously. And uh. we just started by the end of it. We were like talking talking over all the characters because the dialogue's terrible. It's <laughs> yeah. like they're talking to Sherman the robot. Come with us. And I just oh, went, boy. fuck you. <laughs> so no one could hear what he was saying. And like the audience was like cracking up at us just being like assholes. But it was uh, it was a good experience, but... It, it uh, was eye-opening, and then you saw eye-opening. it, and you're like, I want to make movies. Yeah. I, well, I you could memorable. say this affected your career, like, going forward. Yeah, You know, sure. just like in the movie, how they go back in time to change things. Uh, this this life affected the, your trajectory. Exactly. <laughs> then I went into the future and worked on a computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there was yeah. a paradox, and it was like a time wave that... Yeah. that 
destroyed everything. There's a paradox, and it was you have to stay late tonight. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, what do you want for dinner? Yeah. <laughs> like this movie seems to be almost completely forgotten. Um, I, it seems like something that would like be on TV, like in in Canada. Yeah, I could see like know? on City TV or something. There was a City TV van at one point. That's oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, at the beginning, one of the it was supposed to be like a reporting van. I was like City TV. That's our local Toronto. Um, news station. Yeah, yeah. I kind of heard of this in high school and it was just from a friend. It was probably 1989 because yeah. he said he had just seen it in the theater and he was just talking about how hilariously bad it was. Yeah. Really? And I'm like, okay. And he kept talking about this movie Millennium, Millennium. And I'm like, okay. And I kind of, I don't know, maybe looked it up or something, but I never saw it. So this is the first time I yeah, saw yeah. it. But I've always been aware of it and we, we tried to rent it couldn't find it anywhere on iTunes. Oh, or yeah. Um, but it was just re-released, on surprisingly. On Shout Factory. Um, on Shout Factory. And it's a double Blu-ray disc, or two Blu-rays, and it's a double feature. It's Millennium and Rotor. Oh, and well, Rotor, oh, I saw that, yeah. So Rotor, yeah. a much more well-known bad movie, one that I still have not seen all the way through, so I, we might have to get to someday. Yeah, apparently the transfer, it's like 26 bucks, and it comes with the two Blu-rays. Everyone's saying the, the Rotor transfer is amazing. Well, this, this, <laughs> one looked, this one looked good, too. It did. Yeah, this yeah. one looked really I mean, for 720 but it was still decent. Yeah, yeah. sure, and like... Um, but, but all the reviews on Amazon are, are pretty hilarious. They're are they like, just for Rotor? No, they said it's... Uh, well, everyone talks about Rotor, but they're like, get this for Millennium. It's yeah. like Rotor is one of the worst movies I've ever oh, seen in my life. Well, I mean, maybe it's just because I've seen, you know, so many bad movies at this point, but Millennium wasn't that bad. Like, it's it's not perfect, that's for sure, but like... It was actually a lot better than I was expecting. I was expecting yeah. it to be hilariously oh, bad, like yeah, something it, like Future Force or something yeah. like that. But. I would say like the first third or maybe first half before they kind of go sort of back in time and relive that day from another perspective. Yeah. I think up to that point, it was like, wow, this is pretty interesting. This Dude, could be like I was like on board and yeah. then it kind of doesn't really go where, and I didn't like the ending. It just starts getting really, like when they're doing the investigative reporting on, mm -hmm. you know, the black box and everything and they play it again, play it again. Mm -hmm. It, it, gave me the vibe that they were trying to go for that sort of pacing of say like Coppola's uh, The Conversation but it's <laughs> yeah. really boring and really dry and I was I, I, that's the thing about the movie is it's like it's kind of bad but it's also just really boring yeah the, yeah, the beginning it, it, it gets very dull boring. But, but it, I think like the plot is, is interesting oh yeah absolutely so let's just let's give a little brief synopsis just so people know because I'm guessing many many people have not seen this movie heard of it. well this, first of all this movie stars Chris Christopherson who uh, I've been now informed who apparently was a big movie star uh, well he was yeah. more of a country singer yeah, that's what first. I thought like yeah. me and Bobby McGee like he wrote that song mm -hmm. oh. famous uh, I don't like that song at all I he, can't he stand was that in, song what, <laughs> Uh, he, he was, was in a Star Is Born, Star which is maybe born, was right. his the biggest 70s, role. The seventies version with Barbra Streisand. Right. Yeah, and I think maybe he was like hot for a minute um, because I guess he was like a musical actor. Um, I guess he was. A, people thought he was attractive. Yeah. Uh, I don't As know. opposed to a lunch bag with a beard. <laughs> yeah, he's got no charisma in this. But he's movie. just so wooden, and he <laughs> looks like wood. <laughs> <He> <laughs> Yeah. He probably smells like wood, probably, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he probably just smells of booze. Okay, so let's get to the plot. So basically, it's a about a plane bag. crash, um, and he's the investigator. And like, it starts off with this plane crash, and something weird happens. They get you know the black box recording, and someone says, the pa go check on the passengers. The passengers, they're all dead. Mm -hmm. What? So it's like this mystery, and then mm -hmm. he meets this woman who you think is like a reporter or something or she's like a stewardess or we don't really know she's just serving coffee yeah this is cheryl ladd by the way yeah. she's a sky waitress <laughs> yes <laughs> but i don't know why she was there for the investigation i assumed she was a reporter maybe not anyway they meet up and they sleep together and then he goes back the next day the, sorry the next morning we see them and then he runs out of the room and he comes back and she's gone what and so then later that day he's looking at the wreckage and he finds this weird device mm -hmm. and he like shocks himself and then out of a portal comes a, you know a futuristic Cheryl lad and he's like what the fuck is going on and then the movie completely shifts to some future world and we find out that okay this is this is the plot that we we don't know until the very end. In the future, the world is dying. So, but they have time travel technology. So they they find out when there are plane crashes, mm -hmm. and then they go onto the planes. They take the people that are going to die and bring them to the future, um, so they can repopulate the earth. They keep them in stasis, and then I think their idea is to, at some point, 
shoot them even further in the future to repopulate like a new world. Right. Because everyone right. in the future is sterile, and then they're like, the only thing that we can do is create um, dead bodies. So they, they can create clones, but they're not alive. So that's what they replace oh, in the plane. That's what's in all the tanks. That they yeah. Have. yeah, they replace them with duplicates with no souls, just so when the investigators in our present day... Yeah. Go through the wreckage. They'll find actual bodies that look like right, the okay. people, and then they, oh, they, they can right, be okay. identified with DNA. And but why would they populate another world? Because isn't isn't the whole point? I thought they were populating their it, own world. It was Aren't, Earth. Uh, yeah, but it's Earth in the future, and in everyone's the, everyone's sterile. Yeah, yeah, they said all the men are sterile, but I think the idea they keep them in stasis. Yeah. So at the end is to like shoot them ahead in the future another thousand years. Uh, after the like, end gets really stupid and convoluted, yeah, because I think it's like all the pollution. The world is so polluted that they just want to go ahead really far to when. Wouldn't it be more polluted? Well, no, not if not if uh, humanity is has, wiped has out, died out and yeah. has had a chance to die out, and the world is like. You I don't know, understand the. I mean, I suppose there's moral <laughs> there's moral issues with what they're doing, but yeah. why would they populate another world and not the world that they're in, and just try to fix the world that they're in? Because that seems more like. Well, we're really not doing anything wrong because we're kind of trying to save the Earth and trying to. I think. Know, I think at that point, humanity. maybe the Earth is in the place that it is because of overpopulation. They don't have oh, any okay. um, pollution because it's sort of hinted that or said explicitly, like Cheryl Ladd and her kind of like babes. Yeah, like you know these beautiful women the that go back She's in time. time traveling stewardess babes. They're like Charlie's Angels. They're like, you're <laughs> the healthiest looking ones because everyone else in this world looks mm. right. Some of them have gray they, skin. They all, all look like Discount Dune <laughs> Yeah, characters. so I, it's hard to explain because it seems to make sense and then it gets more and more convoluted to the point where it's like, well, why didn't you just do this? Why didn't you just do this? If they can go back in time, why don't they go back in time and yeah. fix their own world? They're like, there's all these rules. They like, can only go back in time once and yeah. then it's like they they're cause- creating time paradoxes if they cause a paradox like which happens twice in this movie that they leave yeah, they these have stun a guns par- paradox time quake yeah so yeah. it's represented by an earthquake yeah. yeah so this time quake will follow them back to the future and it eventually will destroy the future yeah it's very kind of convoluted well it's it's nice to see um anthony daniels reprising his role <laughs> as sherman the robot <laughs> He might have been the best character. <laughs> well, he's apparently a sex robot. What? Yeah, I was reading up on it, and it's like, I guess, like, he's... Which doesn't make any fucking that sense. That was not clear at all. Not to mention, what? like, spoiler alert at the ending, he's crying. Like, what? Was he, was he crying? Yeah, he's crying? I thought, <laughs> maybe I thought that was just oil. I thought he was no, leaking he's oil. Crying. <laughs> and he's, like, giving some bullshit excuse about how he can't go where they're going, and... It's a B-list Tin Man costume, yeah, yeah. like it, where he has kind of like a metal-looking head, but it's just his face. It's kind of like faceted. Yeah, and he's got like spandex legs. Like it's obviously like <laughs> yep. a human being in there with like <laughs> paper mache, like <laughs> accoutrements. You know, it's funny that the movie's like 1989, but it looks like 1979. Yeah, it's bland and gray. Yeah. Like the color palette's like four or five different palettes of brown. If it wasn't for yeah. the fashions and Cheryl Ladd's hair, the hair. Yeah. Yeah. Her hair in this movie. First of all, when she comes from the future, yeah. her, in the in the future, she's got this like pompadour hairdo. Yeah, it's kind of like Art Deco. It's sort like of. a '80s. Um, it's a bit a like new, Blade Runner, new wave artist. Yeah. Um, it, it's like Elvis <laughs> would look at this and go like, like tone it down a little. Like yeah. it's huge. It's very it's high. So and big. Short. It's and short got, like, and hot. Yeah, and she's got like the ducktail <laughs> in the yeah, back yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So. And she listens to rockabilly music. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like. It's like 17 gallons of hairspray that she's put into her hair. Like, it's like shellacked, pretty much. I really yeah. like comparing, you know, kind of crappy films like this to what what came out that year. Mm-hmm. So you, you look at um, 1989, <laughs> we have Batman, yeah. uh, oh, Indiana no. Jones, and The Last Crusade. Everything good came out that year. Yeah. The um, Abyss. The Abyss, Field of Dreams. Um, UHF came out that year. UHF. And then, um, you know, uh, it's, I'm not going to say it's on par, but Star Trek The Final Frontier. Oh, is that number? Was that the bad five? one? <laughs> the one that Leonard directed? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, one Leonard directed? <laughs> the one with uh, the guy. Why does God need a starship? Yes. That yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, does yes. Cyborg. So Cyborg. You know, just to think of the context of that. That Millennium came out the same yeah, year. Yeah, that's is, uh, kind of yeah. funny. It's true. You got to think of like what came before that, and it's clearly trying to do like a Star Trek, Star Wars thing yeah. that is just it just didn't have the budget it, it's kind of one of those things that like it just 
the initial kind of investigation and stuff, it's like, okay, this is something you'd see on the X Files. Well, or that's what I was thinking. This is a really interesting concept and story, mm-hmm. but this is more of like this is a Twilight Zone episode, or this yeah. is like a really cool sci-fi book. This isn't the type of story you would normally see for a feature film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, it's very conceptual, and I think it was know? based on it a is, short story. Based on a, a book called Air Raid. Right. By, yeah. um, it was in the credits. Yeah, I can't remember his name. I think I have it written down somewhere. Sorry, yeah. sir, whoever you are. I'm whoever sure. Are, Maybe sir. I should go John back and... John Varley, <clears throat> I think, was his name. Yeah. That's right. Okay. He's like a sci-fi writer, but I think, yeah, it was like a short story or a, a book that he'd written or something like yeah. that. Yeah. The yeah. thing it, is, I love sci-fi um, novels, and this is the type of story I would actually really enjoy reading, yeah. but it just didn't quite translate. It's just the focus is all in the wrong place. Yeah, because you realize halfway through the movie, Chris Christopherson is not the main character. Mm-hmm. It's actually Louise. Sure I think that's lad. her name. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was very jarring. And then we kind of come back to him at the end, but then you realize he's just like bland and boring. Yeah, and then we have the other character of the scientist guy. Yeah, Dr. Um, Dr. Dr. Mayer. Arnold Mayer. Mayer. Dr. Mayer. I know, I was like, the mayor is a would, doctor? I would, I would, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't call anyone that. That's a terrible name. <laughs> Dr. Mayer. It's uh, Daniel J. Trevanti from Hill Street Blues. He was oh, the, the captain. Of course. Yeah. You've that seen him. Me, that makes me like him more. Yeah, yeah. You know, because he's kind of creepy in this movie. I mean, everyone wearing glasses in this movie is creepy because they, they, all, they all look like pedophiles. <laughs> yeah, it's like this gigantic like pedophile glasses. Unfortunately, that was the style. That was the, the style, yeah. yeah. Pedophilia? Yeah. <laughs> Um, the Jeffrey Dahmer glasses. Another boring name, Bill Smith. Like, yeah, uh, what the Chris hell? Come on, but he's you know he's the investigative director for the NTSB, which is uh, the National Film Board of Canada. <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh, you know, National Transportation Safety. Right. So he, yeah, he's safety called in. Beard? Uh, <laughs> safety know, beard. Safety beard. Okay. He's got a crazy beard. Yeah. Yeah. So he's there to investigate these two. These two planes like collide in the Yeah. Mid-air. One flies over top of the other. And you're like, what? At the start of the film. Yeah. And like the co pilot's like, go down, go down. <laughs> How do you I guess just that's go like, down? That's pilot speak for I don't go know. down. Yeah. Is that what they say? Descend. Yeah. Descend. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So he, uh, it, uh, Daniel Trevanti was sort of like, he's in the background and he kind of shows up at these plane crashes Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like hinted at that he is, he's been on the trail of something happening. Something's up. Something's up. He kind of knows knows what's going on. Yeah. He's like, what uh, happened? That's unexplainable. Yeah. And he kind of like, you know, Chris Christopherson is doing like a a speech to the press or press conference. And he kind of like, you know, shows up and starts asking, did you, did you find anything that's sort of any kind of anomaly in the crash or yeah. anything? And earlier they had sort of found these, all the uh, watches. Um, oh, all the yeah, bodies that was cool. Are going backwards. Mm-hmm. And then some, uh, maybe it was Chris Gustafsson. He's like, oh, so someone had a gag watch. Yeah, a gag watch. What the fuck is a know. gag watch? I guess watch? that's really 80s. Is there yeah. a, a is there? joke watch that yeah. goes backwards? Freak your friends out. But then they, they gag show. Gag watches were hilarious in 19, Yeah, then they, they, they yeah. grab like five five of them and they were all going backwards. Yeah. I was like, yeah. what? So, gag but watch. like my question now is if the future people have been doing this for a while, which it seems like they are, then mm. there should be tons of unexplained plane crashes before. And no, we're just like finding pl- it now. The thing is the plane crashes are all explained. So they're all uh, due to natural causes. Like, you know, two planes yeah, collide. But like, why there's, is this? There's a terrorist in one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But why is this the one, the one at the beginning of the movie, the one that, um, you know, they're just starting to notice all this weird stuff. Because they leave a stunner. So what they do is they go through, they, <laughs> they send well, Cheryl Ladd and her team back in time. There's two crashes, though. Yes. So there's one in 1963 and one in 1989. Right. So they send these women back in time yeah. as stewardesses. Yeah. Uh, and they have a little stun gun. And mm-hmm. they go through the cabin <laughs> one by one. Put putting people, people, to, people sleep. to sleep. Put people to sleep with this stun gun uh, until all the plane is asleep. Then they bring the plane halfway through a kind of portal. Yeah. Uh, bring all the sleeping people out the back, replace them with clones without souls. Yeah. <laughs> and then let the plane uh, have its natural accident. Right, right. So whether it's collision or in one was like a, a terrorist took over. So they Crazy terrorist. They said yeah. he's going to shoot the cockpit window and cause the crash. So they plant an explosive on the cockpit. Right, uh, right. I, I don't understand how they account for the missing people. And I, I read something that, that well, they, they would choose people that people wouldn't notice were gone. You know what I mean? Like, it seems yeah. really fuzzy. Like, why? Right. Because it'd be like, where did that person go? You know, the plane, I, I don't know. I guess there are plane crashes where they can't 
recover all the bodies? Well, I guess they like because they say that we have to make them clones because so the family can identify them through dental Cl- records. Okay, right. So, uh, right. Okay. So, as far as the regular world is concerned, these people died in a plane crash as they did. That's what the really happened. Mm-hmm, but right. they're just plucking these people out, replacing them with super realistic clones of them. Right. Which, how do they have the? How do they make? How do they get the information? Yeah, in their shitty like like post apocalyptic. <laughs> Mud computers. Okay, we have to talk about this post-apocalyptic world. It's, it's all, really just one set. It's one warehouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, with like, it looks like an abandoned steel factory. Yeah. It probably was. It's just like a lot of scaffolding. Smoke and visual <laughs> Very noise. gray and silver. Yeah. But they have metal-y. this, uh, all the computers <laughs> that they're using. <laughs> it's just like, like old Commodore PET computers. Yeah. But for some reason, they're kind of coated in cracking old uh, mud. Yeah. For yeah. some reason. <laughs> What's a Commodore PET computer? Uh, it's what we, Jim and I probably grew yeah. up with them. Green and, text on black. Okay. Like, yeah. Oh, it, gotcha. It's all like one big computer that's like the monitors attached to the keyboard. And oh. you probably know it if you Is saw it. Is those like the ones they had in John Wick? Yeah. As I was like, those why are, are they com- using those old computers? Those are Commodore 64. It's suppo- that was supposed to be like kitschy in, yeah. That, yeah, in yeah. that movie. They had great text adventures. Okay. <laughs> that, was the, that was the best part. It was all the Infocom games that the, they played. The, uh, talking about like the environments, I think the best environment in, in the movie, like production-wise, it's an actual real environment, is like the initial plane crash site. Oh, yeah. You know, it looks really good. And you mm-hmm. sort of get a helicopter like flying over. I mean, you can sort of see the smoke canisters where... You know, it's supposed to look like wreckage that is, you know... Causing the smoke? Yeah, causing the smoke. But you know, they're just smoke canisters there. Yeah. And you can sort of see, like, body bags placed here and there in the airplane wreckage. But I couldn't help thinking... I don't know if you guys have ever seen that Perry Bible Fellowship uh, cartoon strip. No. And it's like this guy saying, hey, there's no survivors over here. Hey, there's no survivors over here. But look over here. And basically, he's, like, lined up the bodies. So it says, will you marry me? (laughs) (laughs) I'll, I'll, put, I'll, I'll post it on Twitter. <laughs> that's it's pretty so funny. good. But that's all I could think of when I saw that scene. But I mean, outside of that, it's like we don't know how to spend our production budget, whatever it is. Yeah. So let's just. I think they spent it on that scene. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. Well, they said, I was looking up the trivia, and that uh, pilots, I guess they set up this crash site kind of near to Pearson Airport in yeah, Toronto, that, and that pilots were flying over it. And, so they just shot like that. Uh, and we're seeing this wreckage, oh, and we're, so we're like we're regular That it was yeah. real. Oh, well, they really should have told everyone that day. That, you you know? would think so, yeah. Let's like stage this double plane crash right by an airport. It's a gag plane crash. You never get around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's I one mean, of them uh, gag, uh, gag plane <laughs> crashes. Well, as I was saying during the movie, have any of you seen the show Air Crash Investigators? It has, has multiple yes. names. Yeah. It's yeah. basically just like a, a you know, um, whatever, Bravo or learn TLC, whatever. Mm-hmm. One of those, it's like a murder show, but it's actually about a plane crash. Did they do the recreation? Yes. Is yeah. it in like so I used slow-mo? To, because I, my... For my, I used to have a job called QCing, which is called quality control, where a show would go out um, to tape. Back then, which was only like <laughs> 10 years ago, um, it was still on tape. So I had to watch it go to tape. So I'd have to watch the same episode of some shows like seven times in one day. To notice like any, like a dead pixel exactly. or something. Or and it was these like crappy, like lifestyle reality shows. Um, but this was one <laughs> of them. And I was like, Air crash investigators, which is actually kind of interesting because you have to like work backwards from this wreckage and decide, figure out like what happened. And so many dumb things happen and result in crashes. And I was like, are there enough plane crashes to have a whole show of it? Check it. It's on its 30th season. And each episode is, I think, two plane crashes hosted, it's an hour long show hosted by chris christopherson <laughs> <laughs> maybe he did yeah. i was like i was thinking because you said like lifestyle reality shows i'm trying to think of like plane crash investigators as a lifestyle I show well, i mean like reality <laughs> shows as like house home buying shows and um you know cooking shows that's the type of stuff that right. i'm talking about but uh yeah so it's like kind of i found the first part kind of interesting yeah. And then it kind of took this shift away from the mystery into this other kind of mystery, this futuristic time travel mystery. But the thing is, like, the whole story is kind of set off and them being really sloppy, so twice. Yeah, mm-hmm. they've, they've lost it up three. twice. They've lost the stunners. They've lo- they lose yeah. the stunners. They leave them on the plane. So yeah. the whole kind of story is set off by Chris Christopherson kind of discovering one of these things and stunning himself. <laughs> <laughs> And then later on, the Dan, other guy does it. It's revealed that when they go back to 1963, yeah, right. 
one of the future Dr. girls Mayer? yeah get yeah. shot by a terrorist and she drops her stunner yeah and somehow dr mayor that wasn't dr mayor you guys that was chris christopherson that was chris christopherson oh. which makes no sense we why would exactly yeah. but why wouldn't dr mayor be the one that was on that plane well I don't know. That would have made more sense, Maybe right? Dr. Mayer was like an investigator at that point. Well, what he says was he was like, this was found on this crash. It's like, then how did you how did you get it? Like, nobody wanted it. He just, maybe he stole it. Maybe. You know? I don't know. Um, and then Chris Christopherson goes, I was on that crash. I was yeah. on that plane. I don't understand what happened in that scene because... They're taking the people, they're replacing them, and they're like, yeah. hey, don't do that guy. He's a survivor. So they know he survived that crash. Right. Yeah, because they can't change the past. Yeah, but right? how did he survive? He, maybe, was he just maybe the lone survivor? He just happened to Some survive. Some people survived that crash. Maybe that was tacked on to the screenplay. Um, uh, you know, like, but not in the original story. Oh, I'm guessing so, yeah. Oh, because, if, like, you go on IMDb and... Yeah. Uh, the writer said that this was the fifth or fourth director. This had sort of been pitched as an idea in 1979, and it was originally right. supposed to be Paul Newman and Jane yeah. Fonda. Yeah, uh, directed by Doug Trumbull. Douglas That's Trumbull. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, Who's that? He directed he, Brainstorm, but he he's did, like an effects. Yeah, he did the effects for 2001. A Space oh, cool, Odyssey cool. And, well, that probably would have been better. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, I mean, there's there's a lot in the original screenplay <laughs> that that didn't make it into the film, like Bill Smith. Apparently dies of old age by falling off his houseboat and drowning. Oh yeah! What? <laughs> I don't know how, Wait, how, he didn't die of old age if he drowned. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> no, that's well, that was, unless, is that what it says? That wasn't my wording. Unless, but. Uh, unless he falls into the, to, like, the lake because he's old. Because he's too old. He's yeah. like, I'll just reach down and get this thing. <laughs> <laughs> then he falls over the edge into the water, and he can't he can't swim. Or it's yeah. like a re he's reverse like fountain of youth. It's like the opposite. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but, so uh, was that in the original? That's in the original and... screenplay in the original manuscript. I don't know how you work that into like the this movie. Well, I, I don't says, know how you work anything into this movie. Well, the writer said that four, yeah, four directors came on before they went with this guy and that he rewrote the film six times. Wow. So every director would come on and have their own ideas that he would sort of add and like, yeah. you know, mix around. So by the time they hired Michael Anderson, yeah. and th this guy, when he directed this movie, he was 70 years old. Wow. And he directed, he directed Logan's Run. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and Dam Busters and Around the World. I didn't know he 80. did Dam Busters. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. So I'm like, oh, Logan's Run, pretty cool. And yeah. then I'm like, holy shit, he started directing in 1949. Wow. Well, that, he also did like a 1984 like I, which I didn't even know existed in like 1956 or something like really? that. Really? Yeah. So there's a version of 1984 of the George Orwell. I've well, only heard of the made of like into the a John movie Hurt by one. this by Michael Anderson. Wow, I didn't um, know. What's but, what's Dam Busters? It's like a World yeah. War II. World War Two. <laughs> so it's basically yeah, it's all takes place on this bomber and mm. they have to like fly the bomber and kind of like yeah. find her enemy radar to like launch this bomb that will destroy this dam to bust the dams to bust the dam I yeah. see okay well I probably wouldn't like that movie but. Uh, but you know like someone someone like Robert Wise I don't know how old he was when he directed Star Trek the motion picture but right. you know that's a good film as far as I'm concerned yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was, really he was like pretty it. old I mean he yeah. must have been I think in his he could have been in his 60s the funny thing there, is is but. like the only old director you hear about now who's like so good it's like Scorsese yeah exactly yeah, I know yeah. and mo well, because most people rightly retire I wish you Scorsese know? directed Millennium oh god <laughs> yes he would have made it amazing <laughs> has he ever done a sci-fi I don't uh, think so, don't think so. Don't he's know. due yeah. <laughs> yeah you think he's gonna do that and then like die well, yeah yeah. I don't know I think um, yeah he's got a few more left in him one of the one of the movie taglines is the people aboard flight 35 are about to land 1000 years from where they plan to Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there's a moral that's... implication of they're taking people like what would happen if you were t if I took a flight, you know, to Los Angeles, I wake up, I'm in this horrible dystopian future. Yes, mm -hmm. you're not dead, but they're doing this to these people against their will. But yeah. they're just trying anything to fix, like, their, hey, to fix know, their... Maybe give them a choice. World. Are you going to die? Or we can like uh, shoot you a thousand years into the future. Yeah, well, they kind of... She, what she says, she's like, we're giving them a second chance. Giving humanity a second chance. <laughs> yeah, that, not that them. too. Yeah. I thought what she if, was saying them. What if the person that they like... What are they all going to make them like have sex? Yes, with they're the, going with, the, to... with Sherman the sex robot. Yeah, but what if they're I'm going like... to a repopulation camp? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What if, 
It's what like summer I, camp. What if I'm just traveling with a friend? You know, I don't know. Well, what if like well, Jim and I are like, like traveling? There's like families there. You it's like, know. fuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, I, I hate money computers. I didn't catch it. Maybe they said it, but apparently, it's just the men in the future who can't procreate because she has sex with Chris Christopherson, mm. and at the end, the robot somehow knows. She's pregnant. Yeah. So go wherever they're going at the end of the movie. We don't even know. Um, so at the end of the movie, there's another time paradox because Dr. Mayer blows himself up. So this is the second time. So anybody who finds one of these stun guns yeah. stun themselves. is such an idiot that they like point it to themselves and end up like... What? Oh, what's this button do? Blah! Yeah, so Chris Christopherson stuns himself, yeah. but for some reason... And he doesn't die. Dr. Mayer starts fiddling with it and yeah. kills himself. Yeah. He had it set to vaporize. <laughs> in, a, in a rainbow of explosion, right? Yeah, so it's... it's a weird like, effect. And then it's revealed that he was the one who invented time travel that allows the in the future he invented time oh, travel I didn't even which get is that. not clear I think he I read that on the Wikipedia I right? did so oh, yeah. I didn't get that part I didn't get maybe that at all maybe it was in the book along with yeah, him maybe falling off his boat and in, drowning in the book <laughs> yeah <laughs> he dies of like a, a twisted bowel on the toilet <laughs> like, like Elvis <laughs> yeah um, but like it's also it doesn't really make I mean nothing makes sense but the whole like he finds the stunner <laughs> and then he stuns himself but somehow is still awake and yeah. Louise is like give me that back uh, we didn't cause that plane crash I have no idea why she says that and then she's like I think he was still awake he knew who I was he's and then, awake but kind of like paralyzed I guess because yeah. he, he in his world he met her earlier that day they went to dinner and they had sex so she's like Ah, I guess this means I have to go back in time. And we don't really understand why she had to just because to avoid this paradox thing, because I guess. It's this weird looping <laughs> thing that happens in time, time travel movies. Right? She was sent back, and I guess they decide that she has to prevent him from going back to the uh, crash site right. or the warehouse with the pieces so he doesn't thing. find the stunner. Oh. But she doesn't so do that. She doesn't. So we relive that scene. So first of all, you kind of watch the scene of them kind of meeting up. And then it just cuts to the morning after, which I'm going to say right now, this is my favorite part because I really didn't see this coming. Mm -hmm. um, because you're like, okay, something's weird with this woman. And then you find out about her in the future. And I love the the you know trope or whatever you want to call it the device of going back and reliving this day what you didn't see from a different see. perspective exactly and they've done it in tons of movies and i thought this was really well done it's yeah. like oh okay okay and it's like a fish out of water almost because you now you know why she's kind of acting a little funny mm -hmm. you get this backstory of in the future it's so polluted so they all have to smoke this is why she smokes all the time they go on this kind of awkward first date and he's just like there's something about you, you do everything different yeah. or, or too fast like she yeah. He's really like hitting on him. Let's go to dinner and like. How about we have dinner and drinks? Yeah. And now and then he because for some reason she just knows that she has to sleep with him. But she, they have, they have some chemistry. Yeah. You know, he's uh, a little wooden know. as we said, but she was actually pretty good as an actress. She's what, like better than him, I guess. Yeah, he's just he's like, just like he looks like a <laughs> a found person. No, he looks it's like a <laughs> garbage man. No, it's like it's you know a garbage when you like, person. <laughs> you know, it's like a lumberjack. You know yes. in uh probably like grade school or something when you made those like apple grannies. Yeah. <laughs> you like you carve, <laughs> you carve a granny face and then you kind of like apple grannies. Yeah, you would uh, it's like an arts and crafts and you'd carve a granny face out of and like you put an it on apple, the windowsill. But then you'd like dab oh. it in uh, like lemon juice so it doesn't rot or right. oxidize too fast. Yeah, but yeah. then and then eventually over time it would just kind of like wrinkle up and it looks more and like it a turns granny. into an old country singer. <laughs> It, was that the the point of it? To, so it wrinkles. <laughs> yeah, over time it kind of looks like a natural like guy. So he well, kind of looks funny. like he looks you like know, that. If he did an I, apple Christopherson. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I like you know little touches like him saying, uh, "What kind of car do you drive? Or what make make a car do you drive?" And he's like, mm -hmm. "Make." What are you talking about? Yeah. You know, and it's like, yeah, all right. Yeah, I like and then like when she's driving, like, she's like, uh, "Oh, we need to go here. Oh, it'll take uh, ten minutes of that velocity." Like, what? And he's like, velocity. Mm -hmm. Well, because like when they show it the first time and she's like, my car is over there. Yeah. I'm like, like that can't be her car. She just points at some yeah, like sports just, car. Exactly. Yeah. So when they kind of explain it, it's kind of like a cute little. She has like a device that she can control um, uh, machines Things around with. her, which is kind of neat. <laughs> so she stops the escalator earlier. So yeah. they have a little meet cute. Does that happen two times or three times? It, a bunch of times. Uh, because honestly, like the first time I saw this movie way, way back mm -hmm. in the theater when... My friends and I were being assholes. <laughs> uh, 
I just remember like, oh shit, we have to see this. We have to sit through this again. It's only twice. I mean, it's only twice. Yeah. But still, it feels like like shitty sci-fi version of Groundhog Day. This is where the, the movie for me really lagged is when yeah. they, they start going back and they're showing it all. And at first it's like, okay, this is a cute little idea. It's yeah. like, right, you see her like pressing the button, like opening yeah, the car. Yeah, I liked it. It's like, now here's what you didn't see. Yeah, uh, and yeah. then it just keeps going and going. And they well, have, you see them have like, dinner. Yeah, which they have is, no chemistry whatsoever. They're going to this like steak restaurant and they eat salad awkwardly. Aren't and they then, eating at the bar? Um, it just seems kind of <laughs> No, I think or is that just a drink? Oh, no, no. They're, they're a, having scotch and water. Oh, and right. so she she chugs, chugs it, it. And he's, of course, the, which I'm tired of this trope. This is still happening in movies and TV shows today. The the girl who can drink like a man is very attractive. Right. Can mm-hmm. we just, like, retire this? Right. Even in 1989. I'm yeah. surprised he actually said something about her smoking because, like, he looks like he smokes. I know. <laughs> like, nonstop. But she's, like, chain smoking. <laughs> she's eating a salad and then she she's has, like, a cigarette a in the other hand. It's like Dan Haggerty and Elves. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I thought it was kind of cute. And so she's like, oh, shit, I'm not like supposed to be smoking. So she just throws it. And then he's like, oh, it landed on someone. They have a little yeah. joke. But in the and future, they they should be screaming right now. Yeah. They show all the girls before they're going back to like 1963. And they're like, okay, countdown. And then they're all hauling on these cigarettes because mm-hmm. I guess like they need... I guess sustenance, some air or whatever. Yeah. But then anytime they toss a cigarette in the future, it just this laser shoots. And, oh, is and that destroys. what happens? Yeah. So she tosses it in the restaurant with him and it just goes over the balcony. Yeah. Just. <laughs> See, there's uh, cute little details like that. Maybe I missed the laser thing, but I yeah. appreciate these small little future details. Yeah. You know, th- it's something. I think it'd be good if someone like Bill Smith had some kind of background like some maybe tragic flaw of character or some no nope. background in his character where he's just you, really bland well, yeah where you could identify with him or we something got like nothing that. all we get is she's like so you never remarried and you're not seeing anyone right i, I think, am a robot i yeah. think yeah. that's it he's more of a robot than the actual and, robot. i mean wouldn't it be cool like if they had a, an extra element that the people in the future whatever time all over the place mm-hmm. people like cheryl ladd actually had like a, a personality or a quality to her where you kind of knew something about her Outside of just like yeah. skipping through like jumping time and or maybe like I don't know like, like no one has any character I guess except for Doctor Mayor. Doctor. They have a personality, but yeah. they don't have backstory. They don't have we don't know enough about like who they are, why they are, the yeah. way if, they are. What if like his wife was oh man in a plane crash? Oh, is, he, <laughs> is he a widower? No, what? they say divorce. Oh, okay. oh, I thought she like when they're it, at dinner. It's just like a one liner like. So your wife is dead and you never remarried? No, I thought she said, I thought she said, so you never remarried and you're single. Or, yeah. Um, so maybe she did die. But I thought they I, thought she said, ah, who, knows? who knows? Who knows? That's the type of, that's the typical so you, thing with you that. You murdered your wife and you never remarried? Yeah. He <laughs> he just pushed said, her off a boat and uh, <laughs> never remarried. <laughs> he, uh, at one point he says, never go to, he's, you know, he's questioning uh, Cheryl Ladd's character and he's like, never go to bed with someone crazier than yourself <laughs> yeah it's like how is he crazy i guess he's just supposed to be like macho cowboy guy uh, or something well like, he says he hadn't taken a vacation in seven years or some shit right. like that's that. right yeah. yeah he it looks he looks that way <laughs> yeah <laughs> he looks pretty run down yeah. i just go to the desert for six weeks and just yeah. stand in the sun and smoke <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so was there anything that stood out uh as something that you liked about the movie i said i liked the whole going back and reliving the day thing Anyone else? I, I think it's it's not necessarily a good sign when, you know, one of your favorite things or things that stands out in a movie are, are like the visual effects. Mm-hmm. Uh, because yeah. like that scene of the, um, I think it's the post time quake scene where they have that screen yeah. and they're watching like Chris Christopherson's character babbling on about something. And just the way that screen Yeah, they're like watching really cool. the past. It's probably they used like a piece of plexiglass and then you know, project projected over yeah. it or something yeah, okay. like that. that though, was their, though, like that was their time screen. Or yeah. Though it, it looks like it's like on a time TV. It looks like it's on like a round barbecue. <laughs> you look at this graded thing. Uh, there's also some really nice map paintings um, where they have to go to the terminal building, mm-hmm. like because everything's exploding and falling apart because of the, yeah. Of and what Dr. Mayer at, did. at the end, it's like, we're in an airport and yeah. they have a voice going, please go yeah, forward. To the terminal building. Oh yeah. It's like yeah. single file, like, but this the is light. in future world. Yeah. And it's just like, you see this sort of like toxic yellow sky and this weird sort of post-apocalyptic futuristic building mm-hmm. and uh, which is the map painting. And, and when you see the, the interior of their place, the map painting and they're handled by like three, like pretty well-established map painters 
uh, Albert Whitlock, uh, Bill Taylor, and Sid Dutton. And they're all really good. I mean, you can sort of tell the. I think I paintings. saw them in the credits. Yeah. it was just like matte paintings by. Yeah, um, it's like <clears throat> it's mm-hmm. Illusion something or some visual effects company. Oh, like okay, that. okay. But that's, like, that's what I wanted to do. For based this in film. Toronto, I never though? got the op- opportunity. No, they were probably in LA or something. Oh, okay. Like that. So Wait, it was only the model stuff that was done. Yes. Because I think it was just the tail. When they when they bring the people back, it's like the tail. They kind of back the plane up into this hangar in the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's only the tail section. Right. And then they bring all the the kind of clones. They swap the people out through That's the right. back yeah. or something like that. So I think that. But that was like life size. It looked like. It, yeah. No. For point. sure. Um, I mean, there's there's model shots at the the very beginning and some really bad comped. Yeah. Cockpit scenes. And, yeah. Yeah. But uh, the I mean the movie was shot on location in Toronto. Yeah. Yep. We noticed some Toronto streets and stuff, which we always like. Mm-hmm. Um, Bloor Street, Bay and Bloor. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I was, yeah. was driving. To yeah, the same strange bro. Like, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's I was getting that vibe yeah. because obviously, you know, late '80s, nothing looks the, exactly the same as it does now. But you still recognize some streets. And Certain stuff like things. That. Yeah, like I don't know where that is, but I know I've like yeah, kind of I know recognized the vague it, location yeah, or something, which was fun. Um, um, and then Scott Thompson. Yes, Scott saying, Thompson yeah. from Kids it's in the like Hall. Like April noticed that. Showed up. It was like, he I was was like, one is of the that com- Scott Thompson? Yeah. He's at a computer screen. Um, I think somebody in the future barks an order at him and then it does a rack focus to him in the foreground and he's typing on a computer uh, terminal or something yeah. like that. And she said, Oh, is that Scott Thompson? I'm like, I don't know. I kind of missed it. Check and the credits. Check the credits. Oh, it's him. Yeah. yeah. So it was like one shot or two shots the, or something. Did you mention Al Waxman already? Yeah. So, yeah. The, okay, like the Toronto thing. So you've got this who is who of Toronto actors. You've got Robert Joy plays Sherman the Robot. Yeah. Uh, he's turned up in a lot of stuff. He was in. I thought uh, he looked familiar. You've seen him in tons of things, and yeah. without his makeup on, yeah, you'll, you'll recognize obviously. him. <laughs> I think he was in like Land of the Dead. That was the last. He's also in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And then you've got uh, Maury Chaykin, who's who's kind of like the humorless John Candy. Uh, yeah, Maury Chaykin, like he's so he's playing a kind of sleazy guy. He's actually good in this. Who he is plays, that? Uh, he plays one of the investigators for oh. the uh, National Film Board of Canada. Like the, the uh, chunkier, <laughs> the NFB. He's one of the chunkier guys, but people would know him uh, on Entourage. He plays the Harvey Weinstein Ooh. type yeah. character. Well, I didn't watch that. And he's always like yet. yelling and spraying. And he was in like Dances with Wolves as well. But he's yeah. like a he, he's American, but he's like kind of moved to Canada. And yeah, I think he's died. got a kind of Chicago kind of accent. I think so. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, Al Waxman, I think, is one of the investigators or doctors at the investigation yeah he's the guy that, that's talking about the watches oh that's yeah. right yeah and, uh, so right. he was in yes. that a show called King of Kensington yeah. in, uh, in Canada which Mike Myers was in was he really yeah he was like a little kid in Kensington in, in, is an Miami. area in Toronto yeah Kensington yeah. Market is very kind of famous you can go walk around but like it had a very catchy theme song the yeah, King yeah. of yeah. Kensington and Al Waxman famous because he has his own statue in Toronto Ooh, I didn't he does know yeah it's on uh, I want to say it's like Mount Pleasant if you drive up Mount Pleasant there's a little parquette mm-hmm. and it's got a, a bronze statue a life-size yeah. statue of Al Waxman wow but he's like he's looking at digital watches and analog. Watches. <laughs> if you look up Al Waxman on Wikipedia, the picture is not of him, it's but it's statue. of his statue. But it's <laughs> it's right beside these two park benches, and people are sitting in the benches, and it looks like he's kind of interrupting their conversation. <laughs> well, there's statues like that all over the city <laughs> of of people that I don't know. So like, excuse me, I'm Al Waxman. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. don't know what you guys are talking about, but. <laughs> <laughs> I made but let me interrupt you. <laughs> they're sitting in the park bench, like, who is this? <laughs> uh, you might have seen the King of Kensington. The uh, the you know the the wardrobes, I guess, interesting <laughs> in this film. I sort of thought the the Charlie's Angels, the three women mm-hmm. in the future. Well, mm-hmm. a lot of them wear that wardrobe. It looks kind of like Ghostbusters, but it was made by the people who made Doctor Who. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. The like, jumpsuits, these, like brown jumpsuits with like shit all over them. It's like they have these kind of yeah. straps. Yeah. But it looks like the straps are made out of like circuit boards it or something. It almost yeah. looks like they drew circuit boards yeah, on something. And then at one point she takes it off. That this is it, it was pretty cheap and then looking. The, but the computer and then the computer terminal operators have yeah. kind of like circuit boards like Printed, yeah. printed on their foreheads. They kind of look like you know pseudo like Dune or Dark City kind of yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, I can well, see that. Well, just sort of the the cliche of post apocalyptic people, but I don't know why are they sick? Are, uh, yeah, so just I, pollu- pollution. I want to say it's pollution. They yeah. don't they don't say specifically, but I guess we can assume it's kind of alluded to that. That yeah, it's like we poisoned the atmosphere because I, I can only assume that that's why they all smoke when they go back because they're not used to dealing with clean air. Right, right. 
So, so and then he kind polluted of polluted like, the earth by smoking too much. Yeah, yeah. and she kind of like uh, gets told off by like Sherman. It's like you're not smoking enough. And yeah, she's like fine. Right. Yeah. She's like takes I, a few hauls. I guess he's supposed to be comic relief. I guess. It's yeah. more kind of like wah wah. It's more like is there something that's like creepy he's relief? Like, I know you more than you know yourself. You're not doing this. It's like her, her like butler or something yeah <laughs> it's kind of like 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 the sort of annoying jiminy cricket kind of quality yes. you know like someone on your shoulder just saying i don't know about that <gasps> but then there's like a um there's also like a council of elders okay so there is a council of elders at one point which are <laughs> like five people in these like vertical tubes <laughs> yeah. which is which is one of the best sort of production design Visually. qualities of the film yeah, yeah they yeah. keep kind of cutting back to them and i think they're kind of calling the shots in the future like, yeah do this do that yeah. <laughs> this made this happen so you must it's go like, back shut up you're and in make this happen. <laughs> So we got stretchy face lady. Um, <laughs> so we got to say like everyone in the future looks horrific. Yeah. Everyone looks like their Except faces. Except for our main character, as we said before. Yeah. yeah. She's okay. Sure a lad. Um, but um, so it's like they took a person and then they put these prosthetic skin over her face and then drew like lips on her and stuff. Yeah, it looks like her face is stretched out. Like, I forget her name, Jessica from... Uh, Brazil, yeah. Uh, from Who's the Boss? Our main oh, character's mother. Mother. mother from Brazil. Yeah, and she's getting her face stretched. It looks like that. Like oh, she's, right, yeah. She's kind of got, like, fishing line, like, stretching her face. She does most of the talking. I feel yeah. like that was almost like a rip-off of that. Probably, it looked yeah. exactly like that. Or like uh, F. Murray Abraham in Star Trek. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. true. Which, which Star Trek movie is that? Uh, Insurrection. Insurrection, thank you. Stretchy face. Insur- insur- stretch face. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Stretch erection. You said there's, <laughs> you said there's like a brain in a jar with eyeballs. There's like, I think there's four of them, and there's like two of them are actors. One's a guy. One's the stretchy face woman, and then the next one is two like, brains. is like a brain kind of hovering in the tank with with two eyeballs in front of it, <laughs> kind of like hanging from like fishing line. But yeah. you kind of get it uh, a look of it in one shot, and then. Next to that is just like the Futurama brain in a jar. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. So, so do, can we like establish what is going on there? So they're the elders. I don't know. That must mean that they're the oldest. It's, I would assume it's, and yes. the wisest. So they're just the worst looking. So well, they, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're really ugly. You're an elder. Get in the tank. Just get in the tank. <clears throat> but is is. Are they in the tank because they're really old and, and just deteriorating? I think they, they seem to be the wisest. Yeah, I because it, when it gets to the point when you're just... <laughs> when they're you're only keeping you because of your brain. <laughs> yeah. I guess they're not they're not keeping you because of your looks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, but that stretchy face Wouldn't lady was like brain. still wearing makeup well, and shit. Well, maybe she's on her way to, to looking like a brain in a jar. She gets yeah. her makeup done every morning. Yeah. Like someone has to uh, go into the, in a scuba dodge suit. And... Um, we haven't mentioned the guy in the wheelchair who yeah. looks ridiculous. He has like gray skin and this weird haircut Uh and i don't i thought that he was supposed to be like like her boss who's like do this do that i don't like you but at the end they're they're actually friends you Mm. know i I don't know what his deal was co-worker (sighs) yeah he's like maybe a representative of the elders it's really funny yeah everything is gray everything is silver and gray i mean is is sort of the the deterioration process in in this future (laughs) Does it go like Cheryl Ladd to the guy in the wheelchair to the person in the tank? I guess and then so. Then <laughs> your brain in a jar. <laughs> and brain in a jar. That's I the think, only explanation. Yeah, once the brain dies, then it'll switch. It'll everyone will get moved over one tube. I want to see. Then he'll go. I want to see a sequel where like they go to that future planet and it's just a bunch of brains with eyeballs all talking. <laughs> yeah, and we're trying to get Chris Why? Christopherson's still alive, so they could do this. I think he. Mm. They'll, <laughs> <laughs> He's still alive now. He's still alive now, yeah. He looks like they could just put him in a tube and not, <laughs> not do anything to him. He belongs him. in the tank. <laughs> oh. He's just a floating beard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's apparently like a deleted scene or, or an, an alternate scene. I don't know if it was for broadcast where there's like a Garden of Eden scene with Cheryl Ladd and, and Chris Christopherson. That's what we were reading up. You said that... Uh, they were supposed to wake up. So they go at the end of the movie, which is, this gate. is what pissed me off. They yeah. go into the future, supposedly. And they're a, like, come with us, Sherman. A far, and he's like, Fuck you. A far <laughs> distant future. Um, and then the movie ends. And I was like, uh. Yeah, and it's kind of just like, narrate. he's doing some... Yeah, it's... Uh, 
it's it is not <gasps> the end. It is not the beginning of the end. It is the end of the it beginning. It is the end which of is the like beginning. Which is like gobbledygook bullshit. I don't care who wrote it, but apparently it's like paraphrasing Winston, it's like Winston, Winston Churchill. Churchill or something. That makes no. It made no, no sense. No, it just it just sounds like you know I don't know. The only fear is fear itself, or who whatever. Wrote this? It's like T. S. Eliot. That's pretty good, Ringo Starr. <laughs> you and your. It's a only hot day's the, night. Uh, <laughs> it's only the beginning of the end of the beginning. That makes no sense. But apparently there's some version where they wake up in the Garden of Eden. I, yeah. I think so. But it's so weird because so... They allude to it with the apple. Dr. Right? Mayer... He hands her an apple. She eats an oh, apple. Yeah, that's and right. And she eats it back. She eats the butt, the butt of the apple first. Right. And he's like... You don't do anything like other women do. And then he's like, uh, let's yeah, you want to you play kiss. with my snake? <laughs> my pet snake? And then they have the most awkward kiss, which... Um, so this is, is funny. she's never kissed anyone. Yeah, they have the original version of them meeting and kissing. And, and we're like, what the fuck? I think we just went like, <laughs> ew. Yeah. It looks like they've never kissed before. And then... Both of them. I went to the bathroom. April's like, oh my God, they relived that day. And they show why, because she's never kissed anyone before. Right. But then they kiss again at the end. And it's him that looks like he doesn't. He's it, never kissed someone before. He looks yeah. like I don't know, like a monkey. He's trying to bite her face <laughs> off or something. Like he's yeah. trying to chew on her face. It was the best take they could get. <laughs> they just like, put, they put, <laughs> they're striking his heads in the background. Yeah, they painted like peanut butter on her <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> That was the only way to get Christmas. There's like a pill in there that he has to take. Oh. It's like disguised in peanut butter. <laughs> some, He's a dog. Some mashed up bananas or something <laughs> on her lips. Uh. And his handler is like hitting him. His handler? Put him back in the cage. Yeah. <laughs> so, Colin, you haven't said what you liked about this uh. movie. If anything. No, I liked, I really liked the the plot and the setup and like you see a lot of these B movies and it's kind of just like not that this is a I don't know if you call it a B movie it kind of is I guess but you, you see a lot of them and they're just like right get to show the tits like have some some shootouts which or, they don't by the way which they don't yeah I don't recall any nudity no. in this I did not see Chris Christopherson's tits no. at all I don't think so and um, she does shower at one point but yeah, I don't think we see anything behind like kind of fuzzy glass believe yeah. me i rewound multiple times <laughs> but I, uh, I think the plot is like there's a lot more effort it, it's a good concept mm-hmm. you know i've kind of seen it before there's like a movie called free jack with with uh oh i haven't seen that uh, mick with, jagger with mick jagger and yeah. emilio estevez yeah, yeah. where they kind of like steal people so rich people in the future are dying so they uh, steal people who are about to die from the past right. and then they uh, swap their minds. Right, and take over their bodies? Yeah, so Anthony Hopkins like takes uh, Emilio Estevez. Uh, he was like a, a race car driver and he's about to crash so they steal oh. his body. And I, I don't know if they do the swap out and right. then like he's like, I'm taking over your mind because I'm dying. And then, kind of a similar idea. Similar idea. But yes. This Less is, airplanes. Less yeah. airplanes. But like, I mean, yeah, that's it's a good point because the there is a there is integrity to the story. There's a good, sure. you know, good idea. Good idea. It's a good and, idea, and they yeah. like I like the way it kind of they reveal it. You know, it's the investigation and all that sort of thing. Um, so I think that's very kind of interesting. I think where it kind of lost me was when they relive the day for the second time, and you got to watch them go on a date and. And that love. really sexy escalator scene where it oh, yeah. stops. Well, that's what I liked. So, you know, difference of opinions. Would you like the... I liked the reliving of the day thing. Oh, okay. Well, I thought as a concept... Because um, we got was, to see stuff we didn't see It was very first clever time at first, but right. it, yeah. it, it really drags. Mm-hmm. But I did like the one where she stops the elevator and then he kind of grabs her boob like to yeah, stop her. Yeah, he, he got pretty close to the boob. Mm. And then she goes, oh, let's go to dinner. And then he goes, okay, whatever. And then they walk away and... <laughs> He's got his hand his yeah. shot from behind. Just, just he's kind out. Of like, it's, it's like he's trying to just should I? Yeah, trying to decide whether to cup her ass. Do we As know each other well enough? They and just met, and I, I <laughs> like pointed out. I'm like, oh my god, he's doing the hover hand. On we the had ass. to rewind it, and it's like for like 
seven seconds or something. Yeah, it's a they, long you time. You know, that's Chris Christopherson. He's kind of like, hmm, yeah. he's like should they, I? Where's the camera? Can they see this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but then he kind of decides <laughs> to like, yeah. pull his hand away. He like, doesn't ah. realize that they could see that. Yeah. And then it's just in the movie. So I kind of like that. There's there's a lot more, um, you know, it's an interesting concept and there's a lot more kind of effort put into the plot and the script that I think you usually see from these types of movies. Yeah. Um, it it is, just got too complicated it's very for its own good. There's, mm. there's a big kind of saggy middle, I think, which is kind of. Yeah, it manages to be too complicated and too boring at the same time, yeah. which is uh, not what you want from your sci-fi B movie. Yeah, again, like you know, one one of the visual effects I didn't mention. I don't like visual effects really. I mean, they're fine, they're necessary, but uh-huh. the guy in the wheelchair when he dies and that he's having the electrocution moment. Yeah, it's very like R two D two Jawas. Yeah, it's, like, it's yeah, yeah. It's so well done. Yeah, it's like, like the Roto. Uh, it would, I would right. think it would hold it up like, today. Well, like yeah. it was just oh, really, sure, yeah. really, it didn't look cartoony. No, it was very well done. Yeah, but yeah, I also good. I loved when the uh, when the future gets wiped out and then they cut to the elders in the tanks. Mm. Yeah. The elders explode. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, it, 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 you, you would think everything would just disappear if there was a time paradox. No, everything explodes. Yeah, and they. <laughs> It's like, they have a really gory tank explosion. It's like the only action in the movie. They it's had, awesome. to, they had like, to throw it the in. The inside of the tanks are just like... Isn't that like a... Uh, <laughs> oh, what are the Mel Gibson, Danny Glover movies? Uh, lethal Weapon? Yeah, lethal yeah. Weapon. isn't that like a Lethal Weapon cliche or something? Exploding fish tanks? <laughs> oh, yeah. I and I'm just wondering if it's like... Like in a shoot uh, shootout or something? Was and it a reference? Yeah. <laughs> well, just like leaning on that is kind of like, that's a cool look. Let's do that. It's really good. That's but something no, there, they can do on There's their no budget. water, that's but true. When, yeah. when the dummies explode, there's yeah. so much gore spread on the inside <laughs> of the tubes. Yeah, it was so just great. like splat on the inside of the yeah, tube. Yeah, it was really funny. Yeah, I, that I was funny. Still, did you, sorry, April, did you mention what you liked? Oh, you mentioned the, I liked the reliving of the day. Yeah. Yeah, I, I loved good. the uh, the song that Robbie Williams wrote based on this movie. Yeah, called I Millennium. couldn't get that out of my head, which oh, is a yeah, bad yeah. song. Da, 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 it's annoying. Da, 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 da. Well, that's that's based on the James Bond. And movie. why is it called Millennium? Um, but the song because, because a thousand years, thousand years from years. now, yeah, you won't millennium. know where you landed. That's the tagline. A thousand years a, from a now, Louise, you won't know where you landed. Who does not have a very futuristic name, by the way? No, no. Um, is from a thousand years in the future. A thousand right. years, Millennium. There you go. Yeah. Mm. Um, so that's Millennium. Anything else you guys wanted to talk about? I think we kind of got everything. Okay, so see. why Let couldn't me... the robot go with them? Because he didn't want to. Well, I don't think he wanted, I th- what I, he wanted to cry for what eternity. What I <laughs> thought was happening was they were going to the past. They go somewhere, you know, like colonial England. And you by know. the past, you mean the Garden of Eden. Well, <laughs> yeah. not that far. but that's And start over, you know. Go there, somewhere where they have There are no plumbing. robots in the Garden of Eden. That's why he couldn't go. Wait There's until no they have... There's no robots in the Bible. When was plumbing created? When were toilets created? Probably like That's where you, want, where you want... No, like, like plumbing toilets. Uh... The uh, Isle of the Isle of Crete, uh, the Temple of Canossus, <laughs> um, uh, Minoan culture. That so well, that's I know, where if, I want to. If go. I know so anything Greece, from playing, like they ancient. had plumbing in ancient Greece. Yeah. Wow. If I know anything from playing uh, Super Mario, is like sometime in the eighties. I'd uh-huh. say early eighties. Mm. Yeah, like that's that. when toilets were invented. That's where plumbers were invented, yeah. or at least the best plumbing. Mm. It's just funny in all of these time travel movies where people want to go back in time, and it's like. Um, okay, you would be die. You would die instantly of all of the diseases. Um, yeah. You know, you're not used to uh, exposure of these things. They didn't have proper cleanliness. They didn't have proper plumbing. They didn't have irrigation systems. They're taller. Like, you would just level, die. So you would die up. instantly. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have medicine. They don't have food that they have now. It's like, do you yeah, really exactly. want to go back in time? Oh, you have a cold. You're probably gonna die. That sounds like <laughs> yeah. a good Millennium sequel. It was like that in like the the 30s and 40s. Oh, they should do yeah. a Millennium sequel. I mean, a Millennium sequel or a Millennium reboot, like. Mm-hmm. Make this movie good. Fix yeah, all the problems of working. the original. But then you and know get, they get Chris Christopherson you to know. play the lead. Yeah, where's, he's, where's he's Cheryl, still alive. Cheryl Ladd still alive? Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. It'd be so, so cool if they came back. They would play themselves a thousand yeah. years from now. Right, like Cheryl Ladd is probably like yeah. in the tank in the <laughs> sequel. Like with just Maybe like they're both in the tank and then that's their cameo. Plastic surgery. Oh, yeah. that'd be so good. Yeah. And then they don't have to do anything. They just pretend they put wires to stretch your face up. It actually looks like that. And then Chris Christopherson. I don't have my phone on me, but I'm hoping she's still alive. She's probably still alive. I think she's still alive. Unless she yeah, why not? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Not related to Diane Ladd, we found out. Oh, um, interesting. 
She changed her name from something very crazy. It was like Cheryl Stoppenhoop or something like that. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I'm not joking. And she became Cheryl Ladd. Yeah. Um, but kudos to her for actually having some charisma in this movie, unlike Mr. Christopherson. Her hair. Okay, I know we mentioned her future hair, her yeah. future pompadour. Mm-hmm. But there's a scene where they're they're going on their date. The 80s hair. Her hair, it seems like in every scene, gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> like there's more volume to it. She's just going to launch into like a, you know, sexy 80s song or something. Yeah, I know. Yeah, her hair is very rock star. They're yeah. eating the salad and uh, like in the restaurant and her hair is so big yeah. and Beautiful strong, oh, that strawberry. Big, yeah. It's so huge. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe it's they shot up. it. Maybe they shot it in sequence, teased and it was and just shellacked. really humid yeah. that day. Yeah, it's just <laughs> so shellacked and so huge, and it's, it's like distracting. Don't keep that yeah. cigarette near it. It's gonna go up. Exactly. Yeah. Your hair is gonna like incinerate it, <laughs> yeah. and it, it's even like a different color. It's kind of like the strawberry blonde. It's strawberry blonde, whereas in the future it's platinum. Blonde. Yeah, it's like platinum blonde. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, she had to be more, uh, you know, hairstyle relative to the time period. I guess. Um, but it's funny because it's like they establish her as someone who goes back in time all the time. Right. So she's always blending in. They put right. a, wi- exactly. a wig on her earlier when she's on the plane. What if the, I, li- I like that scene a lot. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, there's no way she's going to fit that hair under that wig. No, but then hey, what if she goes back in time? She's the one that caused like the environmental crisis because of all the fucking hairspray she uses. Yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> and the smoking. Yeah. It's all her <laughs> That would be amazing. <laughs> Again, with a sequel, um, you know, do not make Sherman the Robot CG. <laughs> like, make it practical Please, no. because he looked amazing. Yeah, yeah, he did. He was the best part of the movie. Yeah, especially Joy. when he's crying. He was the heart. <laughs> I, I gotta watch it again. I, 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 I missed the that. tears, but he was the heart of the movie. Guys. He's, the, he's the comic downer of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I think you mean comic relief. What did you call it? Oh, the creepy relief? <laughs> creepy relief. Uh, exactly. Yeah, he was being creepy. Yeah, yeah he's kind of weird. Um, he's a robot. Yes, Millennium. Um, so, as we mentioned earlier, if you want to purchase this movie, it's available on Blu-ray from Shout Factory. Yeah, it's like um, a double uh, double disc. And I assume you can just get it from the Shout Factory I website. saw it on Amazon. You can buy it for 26 bucks. It comes with two discs. It's Rotor and, and Millennium. No, I can't speak for Rotor. I have not seen it. Um, Colin, you saw it, right? Uh, I've seen it on... Did you fall asleep? <laughs> it's not the most exciting movie. It's I very slow. I can't wait to see Rotor, um, mm. so maybe I should uh, I'd like check, to check it, it out. out again. It, it's such a slow start, and it's just like they show all the minutia of every single scene. How did someone get to this place? And blah, 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 blah. So what you're saying is Millennium <clears throat> is better. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah, I think we're all recommending Millennium, yeah. right? Every time I see every time I see the poster for Rotor, all I can think is I can put my arm back on. You can't. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Is that from Robocop? No, it's no. from a children's safety like commercial. Oh, that guy. Yeah, was yeah. his name? <sighs> He's like remember. I'm Astar or something. Astar, like that. That's like, like a Canadian on, PSA. Yeah, I'm Rotor. yeah if, you, if you look it up, it's an old Canadian like safety thing yeah. for kids to be careful around like buzz saws and. Yeah, but kids want a robot arm. So yeah, it didn't sure. work. But also, isn't the Rotor poster like the Road Warrior poster? It's the Mad like, Max. Poster, oh, Mad right? Max. Yeah, it's, it's complete. Just like a rip off yeah. of that, but it's a cool poster. It is a cool poster. It is good. I have um, the original Mad Max one. Oh, not the Rotor one. No, oh, too bad. Too bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so maybe maybe check out Millennium if you're curious based on everything that we have said. Um, I thought it was okay. Um, and if you want to email the podcast, we're at no such thing as a bad movie at gmail.com. And if you want to check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash no such thing as a bad movie. If you want to donate at the $5 level, you get a little mini episode every two weeks. The next one that's going to come out is cats. So you're going to want to have to, you're going to want to hear that. Um, Oh yeah. uh, Here's a little preview. Go see cats. <laughs> and it's the, so good. And, oh, it's amazing. But the one that we uh, just released uh, last week was ugh, the horrible Eight Crazy Nights. I, think which we, is, I feel like we should refund people. For that. <laughs> you, <laughs> see, you couldn't get through it. I could he not. Couldn't. Watch I it. watched could, it. Didn't watch the it's whole thing? so so obnoxious. Wow. Yeah, I but you know not. what? I made the ultimate sacrifice and watched it one and a half times. Oh, God, <laughs> that's pretty good. Well, people on Twitter are like. Is there anything, there can't be anything good about this because it's called No Such Thing as a Bad Movie. Well, here's a little preview of that episode. There is something good. It's the songs. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I said was good. Now, that's a different, some people might have a different opinion on that. Mm, I do. I thought it was good. <laughs> anyway, that was last week. Next week, um, episode on cats. Oh, Everyone so should go see cats. Uh, it's a, a horrible nightmare. <laughs> 
And uh, if you want to tweet at us, we're at no such thing pod on Twitter. And my personal Twitter and Instagram is at April at Mansky. Colin, where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter, I'm Sergeant Zima, S G T Z I M A. Same on Instagram. Jim. And Jim. I'm uh, at one JC Maxwell on Twitter, and I post uh, a lot of stupid stuff. Way too much Star Wars. Got to stop that. And art and architecture. Well, now that the Skywalker saga is finished, oh, thank goodness. it's like you thought it was done in 1983. Uh, right? You know how it's funny that. It's not finished, though. But the thing is. <laughs> no. The whole this is the end of the Skywalker saga. Yeah, that only they only said that like a few months before the last movie came out. Like, yeah, I had not heard that before. Right, it's only like the marketing team yeah. making this up. Shh. Well, they're yeah trying to draw. Well, this is the end of the Skywalker. Gotta, you know what? gotta go probably, see this. It's yeah. probably because of the the Emperor coming back. Well, no, it's it's we but, have to tie but it's, it back it's to the not Skywalker the end side. because there's the Obi Wan Kenobi series. And the latest casting call is for the sure. Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. But you know what? They're probably going to make another trilogy yeah. and then Ray and Finn yeah. and then we'll come back as old people. Blah, blah, blah. But I don't th- think so, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think this was as beloved as the original trilogy. The fact that we're going to 40 years from now, old Ray and old Finn and old Poe are Look, I don't want to be like Everyone. cynical, but like, I don't know where those guys are going to be in 20 years. So maybe yeah. they'll want yeah, to exactly. make another movie. Uh, exactly. Good point. I, I, oh, God. In 20 years, is it just going to be more like every year? Like there's going to be a Star Wars movie. Hey, yeah, people are growing up with Rise of Skywalker. People are growing up with this Yeah, movie, totally. So. Like, and, and there's a whole generation that grew up with the prequels that really love yeah. them. It's like, fine. No, I we wasn't should remake that Cats instead. But let's think, make the good version of Cats. I just think it's funny. You know what? Let's, let's remake Millennium first. I, yeah, <laughs> yes, definitely. I agree. I think it's funny that uh, The Mandalorian has like, stole all of oh, yeah. Rise of Skywalker's thunder. But, yeah, because sure. it's actually like, good. Just, just Baby Yoda, yeah. like itself, has yeah. become such a cultural phenomenon. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> like this stupid fucking puppet. Uh, it's, it's so good. It's like everyone knows it, loves it, and, yeah. you know. It's so cute. It's a very funny. We all want our own little Baby Mandalorian, Yoda. thumbs up. Thumbs yeah, up. I like and it. here's a little mini review of The Mandalorian. Uh, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. This, I had some, like... Sh- one particularly shitty episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but one um, out of eight? Maybe one and a half. Okay. I think some pretty good episodes and then some like really fun episodes. I think possibly, if I can just say this, my favorite scene, spoiler alert, is um, IG-11 on the speeder bike shooting going crazy oh yeah yeah and, and the cut to baby yoda yeah, laughing yeah. That's the, that, yeah. is, that might be my favorite thing that in the whole uh series. that's really not a spoiler it's like an animated <laughs> that's, gif that's online yeah i found oh, that so on good. twitter and it's, it's just so like, like heartwarming yeah, yeah. I, I sent that uh animated gift to april yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah, really it's cute good. so cute um but anyway uh that's it um welcome to 2020 everybody i hope this year is as filled with just as many wonderful bad movies as it was last year um i'm april Edmansky. i'm colin cunningham and remember, there's no such thing as a bad movie.